What's going on, world? It's your girl, Napalm, checking in. You already know what time it is. I'm back with another tutorial. Today, we're going to be talking about how to properly send your Pro Tools session. Whether you're sending it to an artist for a feature or you're sending it to your mixing engineer to get it mixed and mastered, either way it goes, I got you covered. It's gonna be very important that you follow the five steps I'm about to give you to properly send your Pro Tools session. You wanna follow these steps to ensure that the person on the other end can open your session without any errors, like missing audio files or anything like that. Missing audio files can be due to you saving the session in multiple places on the computer and not saving it all in one file. But I'm gonna show you how to, even if that happens to you, how to make sure your Pro Tools session gets sent off properly. I say half the time, when I get new mixing and mastering clients, they ask me how they need to properly send off the files to me. So I knew if they had those questions, others out there had to have the same question. So I decided to make this video. So feel free to watch this over as many times as you need to. And if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below and I'll reply to you. All right, so let's get started. So of course, the first thing we're gonna do is pull up the Pro Tools session we wanna send. So today I'm working on my mobile rig, just my laptop, my interface, and my headphones. You really don't even need the interface and the headphones if you don't have access to them. All you really need for the main steps is to be able to access and pull up Pro Tools. So once you have that Pro Tools session pulled up, the first thing you're gonna do is go ahead and delete any unused files within the edit window that you know you don't need in the session. So I can see here in the top, I have this record track. I know I don't need that. So I can go ahead and delete that. Deleting unused files in the mix and edit window is gonna ensure that the session is clean when you send it off to the engineer or to the artist that's doing the feature. They'll immediately be able to pull it up and know exactly what's going on without the clutter of all these unused tracks. As you see, I have all these tracks that don't have any audio in them. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of them. All right, once you've done that, the next step will be to go ahead and name all your files in the session. This is something that if you're not too familiar with what's going on in the session, you can really skip. But this is just going to help the engineer save time so they can really focus on making your track sound as great as they possibly can without having to focus on these mundane tasks such as renaming and deleting files that they don't need. So I'm just going through right now and just deleting the first half because I know this beat is named Colossal. So I'm just getting that out the front end. All right, so now I have all my session files renamed. So the engineer or whoever's pulling up the session knows exactly what's going on with it without having to fight through a whole bunch of clutter. All right, once I have that done, the next step that I'm gonna do is go ahead and delete any unused audio files that are within the session. So these are gonna be takes that maybe the artist recorded and they didn't keep and that we're not using in the session. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my clips window. And the clips window is gonna be on the bottom right hand corner. So we'll just press this arrow tab and that'll show us our clips window. 
and we'll go ahead and press shift command u to select all of our unused clips now to get rid of those unused clips we'll go ahead and press shift command b and that'll bring up this dialog window and that gives you the option to remove these selected clips from the session to move the selected clips to the trash or to delete the files permanently. Now the method that I'm gonna to use to send the session files later is free as long as your session files are under two gigs. So the session file that I'm working on now, I know it's about 400 megabytes, so it's well under the two gigs. So I'm really just gonna remove the session files versus uh, moving them to the trash or deleting them because I know I have that wiggle room um, session file wise. So we'll just go ahead and click on remove. And as you see from the right column, all of those unused files are now gone. So we can go ahead and close that window back up. So now we can move on to our third step. The third step will be to make a copy in session file. So to do that, we'll go to the file menu. We'll go to save copy in. In this top half, the format and the session parameters, we're gonna leave the same. But down here in items to copy, it's very important that you select audio files and also session plugin setting folder. So once we have those selected, we'll go ahead and press okay. Then that'll bring up another window asking you where you want to save this copy in. So I always opt to save the copy in on the desktop. And once that's done, we're really done with Pro Tools. So we can go ahead and save our session, which we'll do Command Save, Command S, excuse me, and then close it. The shortcut to that is Command Q. Next, we'll go ahead and compress the file or zip it down, make a .zip file of it. So to do that, we'll go to where our session copy in file is saved, which is on the desktop. And then we'll double click. And that brings up this window. And we'll go ahead and select compress copy of Colossal Demo, which is just the name of the file. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make a .zip file of the session. That'll take a couple minutes to do. And while that's zipping now, we'll go ahead and pull up our internet and go to the website wetransfer.com. So this is where I'm gonna send the files to whoever is receiving them. On this window, we'll see we need to put in our email address and then we'll type in the email we're sending it to. desktop so all we're gonna do is just click and drag in that session onto the we transfer website and it's in there go ahead and click on transfer and that is going to send a confirmation email to your email address and you'll need to pull up that and type in the code that you receive Click verify once you have the code typed in, and there we go. Now we're transferring our session. So as you can see here, it's gonna take about 15 minutes for this session to send. So I'll pop back in when it's done. So now that that transfer is done, both the emails that you put into WeTransfer 
will both receive emails saying that transfer is done. This file will be good for one week, so make sure the person on the other end downloads this file within that week, or you will have to resend that session. All right, y'all, that's it for me today. I hope y'all picked up something from this tutorial. Until next time, y'all be easy.